welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, we're going to be talking about rabbits. We're going to be discussing the taxonomy of a rabbit so that we can better understand these furry little animals, as well as talking about what they're like in the wild. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more animal videos, and you can also check the description of the video for a whole playlist on all of my rabbit videos. Before we get started with today's video, I want to give a quick shout out to Clearly Love Pets. This is a company that makes a stylish and contemporary dog pen. This would be for like how you use a dog crate for your dog, but it's way prettier. And it actually makes an amazing pen for other animals. I'm using it for my rabbit, Merida. You can learn more about it by clicking the link in the description. There will also be a 10% off discount code for you to use. So let's talk about rabbits. All of our pet rabbits, all the many breeds, have originated from wild rabbits. Rabbits are found almost all over the world. They're native to a lot of places, so they're throughout many different climates from very hot, dry deserts to very snowy forests. However, through human distribution, rabbits have invaded other places like Australia where they were not native. Rabbits belong to the order Lagomorph. They are actually not rodents, but the reason it's a common misconception is because about 100 years ago, they were part of the order Rodentia since they shared a lot in common. However, scientists separated them because lagomorphs, unlike rodents, actually have a second pair of incisors, as well as other characteristics. But it is believed that lagomorphs and rodentia share a common ancestor from millions of years ago. Lagomorphs include rabbits, hares, and pikas. Rabbits and hares are different, but it does get confusing because jackrabbits are actually hares but rock hares are actually rabbits. The main difference between hares and rabbits is that rabbits are born bald and helpless, while hares are born with fur and their eyes open. There are about 28 different species of rabbits, and many of these species of rabbits around the world are in critical danger to extinction, mostly because of habitat loss. In the wild, rabbits are able to reproduce very quickly. They breed at least four to five times a year and have several offspring. Rabbits are pregnant about 28 to 40 days, depending on the species, give birth, then as early as three months of age, rabbits can start reproducing. Rabbits do not have a heat cycle and are actually considered induced ovulators, meaning they can become pregnant at any time, they just need a male to be around. They can become pregnant again immediately after giving birth. Female rabbits do not spend very much time with their young. They'll actually go to visit them about once or twice a day and let them nurse for a few minutes. In the wild, rabbits are able to survive many different types of climates and they are active year round because they do not hibernate. Rabbits are herbivores eating mainly grasses as well as weeds and other vegetation. They are considered an invasive species in some places and when they do not have any natural predators, they can have a huge impact on the vegetation in that area, destroying lots of plants. Rabbits need to eat constantly in order to get enough nutrition from their diet. So they have evolved to have a very large digestive tract and produce two types of feces. Of the two types of feces, one feces is ingested by them again right after it comes out. And this is to absorb any nutrition that they were not able to get the first time around. So because their digestive system has evolved to work this way and to need to consume constantly, that's probably why pet rabbits get sick often from their digestive tract, especially when not provided with hay. Some rabbits like the European rabbit are very social and live in groups. They dig homes in the ground called warrens. And these are elaborate tunnels with different rooms for nesting and sleeping. They will also have multiple entrances so that they can easily escape. These tunnels can be up to nine feet into the ground. Other species, like the cottontail, are not very social and live mostly alone, coming together for breeding and sometimes to forage. They do not like to build burrows in the ground, instead making nests hidden in vegetation. Most rabbits are very quiet, communicating with each other through, by using body language, scent communication from their scent glands and urine. Usually the only time they make noise is a scream when they are caught by a predator or Merida when she's grunting because she is unhappy. There is however a species of rabbit in Mexico that does make several different calls. Their large feet are wonderful adaptations for escaping predators, allowing them to run at high speeds for long distances. They run in a zigzag pattern to escape predators 
and can reach up to 45 miles an hour. Another great adaptation is that they have their long ears. These ears are not only well designed for being able to hear noises from a distance, they are also important for helping to maintain a rabbit's body temperature by allowing for heat to escape through the blood vessels. And remember that saying, eyes on the side meant to hide? Rabbits have amazing eyesight, so where they're placed on their head, they're actually able to see completely around them so they can see behind them without having to turn their head around. Natural predators to rabbits include many different mammals and birds, such as hawks, eagles, wolves, foxes, and more. Reptiles like snakes will also eat babies if given the opportunity. It's unclear right now exactly when humans started domesticating rabbits. We know humans have been hunting rabbits for thousands of years but it's debated exactly how and when humans started domesticating and breeding rabbits. We do know that rabbits started becoming livestock animals in Rome during the first century BC. Today, 49 breeds are recognized in the United States. As I mentioned before, rabbits have been introduced to parts of the world where they were considered an invasive species. Without natural predators, the European rabbit, being very prolific, has been able to take over areas causing severe damage to the native vegetation and in places like Australia, actually decrease native flora and fauna. A lethal virus found in South American cottontails was introduced to European rabbits that had invaded Australia in an attempt to control the population in the 1950s. However, after killing 99% of the rabbits, the rabbits developed an immunity and continued to thrive again. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. My name is Megan. I hope you enjoyed getting to learn more about rabbits. Shout out to a snake named AJ for sharing their rabbit with us. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.